With the emergence of black-legged ticks in Ohio, it's really important to take precautionary measures before heading into the woods. Visit wildohio.com to see what you should do and listen to our next story that highlights the importance of precaution. Those who think time is an illusion haven't observed nature in the change of season. As the leaves begin to turn, birds are on the move. Eating takes on a new urgency. In fact, it's a full-time occupation. It's time to build fat stores for journeys even farther south. But unbeknownst to these world travelers, they are playing a part in the complex survival story of this unusual organism, the Borrelia burgdorferi spirochete, the transmitter of Lyme disease. The spirochete makes its journey via this creature, the black-legged tick, which also needs a host species to procreate. And while birds might not serve as a primary host, they do play a role in the expansion of the black-legged tick's range, which now can be found in Ohio. The black-legged tick relies on two Ohio species to carry out its somewhat complicated and carefully orchestrated two-year life cycle, the white-tailed deer and the white-footed mouse. Like a page from a professional football playbook is the life cycle of the black-legged tick, once hatched in the spring, the black-legged tick larva seeks a white-footed mouse to feed on. After a year of growth, another mouse is sought out. Then they mate and seek out a white-tailed deer for yet another blood meal. Soon after laying eggs, the adults die, and the two-year cycle begins again. In between, other species may serve as hosts, but it's the white-footed mouse that is the key to the spread of Lyme disease. As the black-legged tick feeds, it transmits the spirochete to the mouse, which in turn becomes a reservoir, ready to spread it back to future ticks. Not every black-legged tick is carrying the spirochete. Factors such as habitat and mouse populations affect the ratio, but black-legged ticks are increasing in Ohio. The Ohio State University's Dr. Glenn Needham has been studying them for years and along his way has met many who have contracted Lyme disease. Wayne County's Josh Neptune is one of them and he agreed to tell his story. I had been working on some horse fence and uh, it, it would have been end of March and uh, constantly had ticks uh, crawling on me, didn't really think too much of it. Um, and then I found uh, one embedded in the top of my head and then one embedded right here, just behind my left ear. Um, and then I, it, was, it was a matter of just a couple days, uh, just a, a dull headache that, that would last 24 hours, would not go away. Um, stiff neck, backache, and, and that was just in the first couple of days, and I and I put it off as a, you know I've been working on fence and and that sort of thing. So I you know I just pulled a muscle or something, um, and then within I think it was the fifth day after I had found the ticks, I woke up at about three thirty or four in the morning, um, with the worst headache I've ever had in my life. Actually woke me up, uh, and when I went to get out of bed to to walk downstairs, uh, I had no balance couldn't couldn't control what I was doing so I'm heading heading down the steps holding on to the the walls in the hallway um, couldn't feel my fingers in fact from my elbows down I had a sensation of, of total numbness um, and that's kind of where it where it started I felt like, okay, this, this is beyond normal now. This isn't just headache or a flu symptom or something like that. Um, it's it's got to be related to the ticks because I, I had never experienced anything like that before. Um, I contacted my doctor. It was a couple days before I could get in for an appointment, and then I started to have uh, major visual problems. So then I, I was having body tremors, um, and the, and it was, it was not just a subtle thing. It was... Uh, like I would be sitting in a chair and, and almost shake myself completely out of the chair. Um, so I, I finally was able to get to the appointment for the, the family doctor and 
the initial diagnosis was possibly a sinus infection because I did have some sinus drainage and that sort of thing, and they thought maybe that that was creating a balance issue. Ended up in, in the hospital one day because I was kind of losing my ability to walk altogether. Um, couldn't think clearly, couldn't speak, uh, lost the ability to swallow properly. Um, it, it actually, almost to the, I was almost drooling. Um, so my wife took me to the hospital. They, they kind of ran some tests for the day, did a, did a Lyme test, which came back negative. Um, you know, did a couple other things and set me up for an MRI. And the MRI detected uh, infection and inflammation on, on cranial nerves of the brain, specifically the, the nerves that, that showed the most inflammation were between my ears and my brain that control your balance and, and hearing and things like that. So. Um, to my shock at the time, there was no diagnosis. For me, it's, in, it's important not that, that my story in particular gets out there or that any one person's story in particular gets out there. What, what's so important to me is that people know more about Lyme disease um, because I, a year ago, I thought you got a rash and some knee pain or something and you know you went to your family doctor and they said oh sure and and gave you a four dollar bottle of antibiotics at your local pharmacy and ten days later just like strep throat you're good to go and and right back into your life um, this I could have I could have never ever in a million years imagined um, and being a hunter and being an outdoorsman and and all the things that I love to do you know, involve being outside. Now that I'm aware of the risks and, and you know, what, what comes along with it uh, symptomatically in that, um, I, I don't step out into my, my hunting grounds or my fishing areas or, you know, I even just for a simple scouting trip or to put up a trail camera. I, I don't set foot in those areas now without, you know, a good pair of boots on that are sprayed down properly with a tick repellent. Um, I tuck my pants in my boots. Uh, my pants are in my socks as well. Um, and, and I spray down, you know, my clothing gets the same tick repellent, you know, whether it's uh, just clothing I'm wearing just to go out and scout around or to hang a camera or whether it's my hunting clothing, it is all sprayed with a tick repellent. Um, everything on my body that may be exposed is, is sprayed with like a deep woods off, um, something that's, you know, mosquito tick repellent. Uh, just to protect myself and it seems like a lot when you talk about it you think oh, that's pretty radical that's you know what are you thinking just go outside and hunt um, it takes me about two minutes and if I if I would have known that six months ago I would think that that would be the easiest thing in the world to do compared to waking up every day um, with what I feel like and what I have and I and I think that you know hindsight is 2020 and I would love to be somebody else's hindsight so they're they don't have to experience this they don't have to uh know anything about this um but it is important you know even with all the precautions if if you know you need to check for ticks when you get home uh and, and you get all your hunting gear off and all of that stuff i i myself keep my hunting gear when i take it off i store it in a container and it stays outside um you know some people may not want to do that that's fine uh, you really, really need to check your body over good uh, to see if there's any ticks crawling or attached. And if you do find a tick attached, it's very, very important to keep that tick. Um, because if, if any of these symptoms show up, um, you know, you're going to want that as your proof that, look, this is what I pulled off of me. Um, you know, this indeed is a deer tick. And, and these are my symptoms. And the minute you have some symptoms that are uncharacteristic for you as a person, um, the minute you feel strange symptoms like that, you need to get to the, get to your family doctor or, or any doctor that's willing to sit you down and, and, and listen to you and, uh, legitimately. Um, and you know, it could, because you need help and you, and the sooner, the better, the sooner you're put on antibiotics, the less of a chance this disease has of, uh, you know, infecting your muscle tissue, your tendons, your, your brain, uh, everything on your body. Um, and the longer you wait, the, the more it, it's going to infiltrate all those areas. So um, my best advice is to, to use the precaution 
uh, because then you don't have to worry about it.